Welcome, Sam Scott. Russell winds it, feeds it back across, Jack in scores! Brady Kachuk makes it 2 0. Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon Plant and I'm your host. Tonight, Ottawa took on the New Jersey Devils as they look to officially avoid being eliminated from playoff contention. That's right, Ottawa still mathematically somehow has a chance to make the playoffs. It's like 0.001, but hey, you know what? You're telling me there's a chance? Yes, I am. But a lot would have to happen for Ottawa to somehow make the dance. They'd have to leapfrog over six teams. They'd have to win all their games. And then all these other teams would have to lose all their games. So basically, they're not making the playoffs. But mathematically, you never know. So they're looking to avoid that tonight against the Devils. Um, a team that, you know, not exactly in the playoff race. But with how bad the teams are in the playoff race right now for the final wildcard spot. They're all losing. If the Devils win today, they'd only be five points out. So you really never know. There's only five games left for the Devils after tonight in their season. But hey, you just never know with this National Hockey League season. So for the Devils, this kind of means something. And for Ottawa, it doesn't really mean much. But realistically, for both teams, this game doesn't mean anything. And if you didn't know where both these teams were in the standings when watching this game, you would have thought both these teams were battling for the final wildcard spot with the way they were playing. This was such a physical um, speedy game after the first period of play. A lot of fun to watch. But we'll talk about that during the game recap. So let's get to the pregame notes firstly. Uh, tonight was fan appreciation night. Um, and early on, I don't think the Sens were really appreciating the fans. But as the game went on, uh, cough, cough, ready to chuck. That certainly changed. But um, on top of it just being fan appreciation night, it was also Tim Stusla bobblehead night. And um, unfortunately, after that high hit from Nico Mikola the other night against Florida... Uh, Stutzla would be out today with an upper body injury. Obviously, this could be a shoulder injury that he's dealing with. Um, he will travel with the team tomorrow to Washington. They play Washington tomorrow night. So he might draw in. He's only day-to-day. -day. Uh, but at this point of the year, with like six, seven games left, if your star player is dealing with some nagging injuries, just shut him down if it's that serious. So if he doesn't come back, I'm frankly fine with that because there's no reason to risk a further severe injury right if he's already dealing with something just shut him down let him rest recover and come back stronger than ever but you know it doesn't look like that's going to be the case he should be back tomorrow uh, but we will see now look for ottawa anton forsberg starts tonight and for the new jersey devils is jake allen who by the way has lost his last four games against your ottawa senators now in terms of the lineup uh, i just want to mention this quickly really greg was on the first line there with kachuk and Giroux. i thought that was really interesting i thought he played a very very good game as well um, on top of the fact that Kachuk literally dominated, which we're going to talk about later. I mean, this guy, whew, I'm looking at the stats right now. That's why my eyes is lit up. This guy, whew, I mean, we are so lucky to have Brady Kachuk as a captain. And if I see, I see people on Twitter, I see people on my YouTube comments, I see people everywhere sometimes saying, oh, Kachuk's not a good leader. Oh, we should trade the guy. Nonsense. Nonsense. All 31 other teams in the National Hockey League, I promise you, would kill. They would kill to have a player like this on their team leading them. So... Um, what a game there for the captain, but I just wanted to give a mention there to really Greg, who looked good in top six minutes. Um, but a couple other lineup notes. Firstly, Thomas Shabbat would return, which is great, but that means uh, you know another player would have to be sent down. That would be Tyler Clevin. He was sent down the other day. We all know he's going to be a National Hockey League player. We already know he is one, um, but it never hurts to get more experience in the AHL in a playoff push, maybe get some playoff minutes as well in the AHL. That never hurts for development, especially for a rugged defenseman. Like Tyler Clevin, by this time next year, he's a full-time NHLer, no doubt in my mind. Um, and by the way, he scored a goal yesterday, or the other day, for Belleville. So, they won that game, they won today as well. So, Belleville is on a tear as of late, which we love to see. Oh, and by the way, Ottawa 67 today, unfortunately lost. Uh, they're now in a 3-2 series with Brantford. They're up by one in that series. They play tomorrow in Game 6. Hopefully, they win that one. But, that's a bit of a detour. Let's get back to the Sens. Uh, so... Clevin down, Shabbat's back, but Boku Imama actually gets called up for his first action as an Ottawa Senator, so congratulations to him. This guy is a fierce battler. I mean, this guy throws haymakers. He leads Belleville uh, in penalty minutes and fighting majors, so you already know what he's going to do uh, on his first shift in Ottawa, and we'll talk about that later, but uh, yeah, great to see him get an opportunity with Ottawa. Um, I think this is a great player in terms of physicality. 
Uh, he really brings a lot of grit. Had a stupid penalty today, I'll be honest with you. But um, it's always great to see a player who doesn't get a lot of opportunities in the NHL get an opportunity. So congratulations to Boko. Uh, last thing I want to mention is before puck drop, Steve Steos, the Sens general manager, announced that they have fired two professional scouts. Now, I just want to make a key distinction. Saw a lot of people on Twitter um, making this mistake. There's a difference between amateur scouts and pro scouts. So amateur scouts scout, you know, draft eligible players or prospects in the system. Um, pro scouts look for talent to bring onto the NHL roster for today or for tomorrow, right? So, um, you know, like Boris Kachuk, for example, that got picked up off of waivers. The pro scouts probably had something to say about that. Artem Zub specifically getting brought over from Russia. That was pro scouting. So other than a couple of hidden gems like Artem Zub, for example... Uh, maybe you can consider Boris Kachuk a hidden gem. I don't really know. But really, realistically, this pro scouting department um, has not been great. There's been a lot of misses, a lot of swings and misses. Um, and I'm not saying I'm happy to see them lose their job. You never want to see somebody lose their job. But with new management, new ownership, new perspective on things, it makes sense to get a fresh voice on the pro scouting side of things, especially with their track record as of late. So I wish them the best of luck. These two, uh, Clark and Murphy, have been with the organization for years they have been around the league for a while. They will get another job for sure. Uh, it always sucks to see people lose their jobs. But once again, this is a business and this is a part of the business. So I wish them the best of luck. But uh, it was probably time for a change in direction. Now let's get into the game recap. And as we all know, the Ottawa Sanders love doing Ottawa Sanders things uh, in the first five minutes of every game. More often than not, I should say anyways. As, yeah, you know what I'm about to say. Devils score the take the one nothing lead under four minutes in. Forsberg is beaten blocker side by Eric Halla, who finds an open lane. As Eric Brandstrom does not really do enough to cover him. Not strong enough on this play at all. And he was beaten a lot to the net today, to be honest. Eric Brandstrom as the Devils strike to make it one nothing. And by the way, you guessed it. That was on the second shot of the game. That's now three straight games. That's unbelievable. Oh, that's actually unbelievable. That is three straight games. The Sens have allowed a goal on one of the opening two shots. I cannot believe it. I'm sure you can't believe it. Three straight games for that is so, so absurd. But you know what's even more absurd? The fact that's the 20th time the Sens have done that this year. Yeah, 20 times. 20 times Ottawa's allowed a goal on the opening shot or two. How are you supposed to get into a rhythm, win games consistently... When your goaltending is allowing goals on the opening shot or two, 20 times out of 82, or not 82 games, we're like seven games away, right? So 75 games in the year. That's nearly, essentially, one-fourth of your games, the goalie's giving up a goal within the first five minutes on the opening shot or two. There's no chance you're going to win a majority of those games when doing so. Obviously, that's been the case for Ottawa. They've been losing all these games, um, and it's just so embarrassing. I mean, three straight times they've done that, 20 times this year they've done that, I, it's, I mean, it's got to be some sort of record at this point. You know what I mean? It just does not make any sense. After the opening goal, Boko Yamama would try to get some life back into the Sens. Um, he would fight uh, McDermott, a very good fighter for the Devils. This was pre-planned. They spoke about it during warm-up, so it's not a shock. On top of the fact that, like I already mentioned, Boko literally leads Belleville in fighting major. So we're, we already knew what he was going to do when getting called up. Um, and it was a bit of an iffy scrap. I mean, McDermott has like six inches on Boko, so the fact he kind of stayed in it is great. Um, you know, just get some life back into the building, back on that bench for Ottawa. So great to see that from Boko. Not so great, though, was that penalty he took later in the game, a blatant interference cross-check on Chris Turney. Shout-out to Sens legend Chris Turney, by the way. He's with the Devils on a line with Curtis Lazar, which, I mean, that's kind of crazy. But anyways, um, yeah, you know, I mean, don't like that interference penalty. But the fight I like gets some energy back in the building on that bench after a deflating opening goal. Unfortunately, though, for Ottawa, the Devils will continue the strike as Andre Palat streaking through the middle in the slot. Tips one past Forsberg through the five hole. They make it a 2-0 lead for the Devils. Hughes from the point notice and executed a beautiful pass through. Um, but once again, you need to push uh, you know, Palat out in the front there. There was two Devil players in that slot area that could have tipped that puck. Ottawa's defense, as usual in the slot, is caught sleeping, and the Devils take advantage. Oh, and by the way, if you thought it was already embarrassing enough that Ottawa, three straight games, has given up a goal on the opening shot or two, well, guess what? Let's make things a little bit worse for you. Ottawa has now given up two goals within the first five shots, two games in a row. So, you just love to see it. You just love to see it, Ottawa. Um, and we continue on, and Ottawa will continue to embarrass themselves on Fan Appreciation Night. 
as Brendan Smith from the point. Let's win rip glove side past Forsberg. Bar in. That would be it for Anton Forsberg as he allows three goals on nine shots. Not great, if you couldn't tell, as uh, Jonas Corposalo would draw into the net, which you hate to see purely because Ottawa plays tomorrow. You never want to have a goalie. You have to play essentially an entire game and then play tomorrow as well. But you know what? I'm sure Corposalo doesn't mind. Hopefully he can get into a groove. But at this point, Ottawa has now been outscored 9-0 in the last four periods to this point at home. Courtesy of Sens Reddit, by the way, on Twitter. And this is also 10 straight goals they've allowed overall in their last three games. So, I mean, a bad stretch as of late for Ottawa is an understatement. As we go into the second period, Ottawa does have a power play to open up the second period. And they would take advantage of it as Sandy Jake Sanderson rips one from the point, post and in. Through a screen, Jake Allen to make it a two-goal deficit is 3-1 now for the Devils. A career-high 33 points as well, by the way, for Jake Sanderson, which you love to see. And I tweeted this out. Whenever I'm down about the Ottawa Sanders and I'm sad and I'm pout and I'm thinking about the fact that the wild card race right now is probably one of the worst we've ever seen. Teams are like asking other teams to go into the playoffs. They're literally begging other teams to take advantage of their losing Ottawa, of course, is at the bottom of the standings, not taking advantage of the flailing uh, wildcard teams around. But you know what always helps? The fact that we have Jake Sanderson locked up for nearly a decade is always a nice little reassuring thing. The fact that we have a stud defenseman like this that will likely win a Norris on that contract, chef's kiss, right? So it kind of makes things feel a little bit better. But um, unfortunately, though, for Ottawa, that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because if you look at the standings, that's what really matters. And we are, of course, again, near the bottom of the standings. But um, back to the game. So Claude Giroux, a big moment here for him on this goal. He surpassed Daniel Alfredson on the NHL all-time list for assists with 714. So congratulations to Claude Giroux. And shout out to John Pearlberg on uh, Twitter as well. He always puts out some great stats, great follow. Make sure to follow him. Um, so Ottawa down by two, but that would not last as Ottawa would give up another one to make it a three-goal deficit again. Nico Hishier out front, tips one home uh, to restore the Devils' three-goal lead. That's 4-1 off Hishier's 25th of the year and second goal in as many games. Shabbat has to tie up Hishier out front. He does not. And, of course, Corposalo has to pay for that one as the Devils lead by three again going into the third period of play. Can't really blame Corposalo for this one. Shabbat uh, has to do far better in front of the net there. And that is now three out of four goals that Ottawa has allowed where they frankly just let the other team rent free, free real estate in their slot area. And when you do that, more often than not, the other team's going to score as they have today, of course. So we continue on now to the third period of play. And this is where things really start to turn around as Ottawa would get another power play early on in the period. And they would take advantage. The Claude father, Claude Giroux, puts it home. One time blast. Jake Sanderson with assist as well. They make it 34 points on the year to extend a career high for him. As Ottawa's now only down by two. It's 4-2. Batherson as well got an assist on that goal. And Ottawa has their second power play goal of the night. It would be all Ottawa after that. More, I should say, all Brady Kachuk. This guy was all over the ice in the third period of play. Literally clawing his team back single-handedly into this game and that would pay off after some massive hits look at your screen he launched mercer into the bench he was throwing hits around left right and center and we're going to talk about kachuk's hits tonight it was literally a record setting night for brady kachuk but after all the hits and all the passion of ottawa's captain because guess what with just under seven minutes left in the game al capitano brings the ctc to their feet off the bench on a 2-1, rips it glove side past Jake Allen. And Ottawa is down by a goal. It's 4-3 Devils. Brady Kachuk literally doing everything as Ottawa's only down by a goal. We continue on as Ottawa would get a power play with a few minutes left. They somehow don't score on it. I mean, they literally did everything but score on the power play. They would keep the momentum though. They would literally dominate the last five minutes, particularly the last minute. Ottawa had a few great looks. Shout out to, you know, Jake Allen. Got to tip the cap. He made some big stops with literally 6.2 seconds left though. Ottawa hit the post. I can't believe Batherson as well. Like with 30 seconds left, missed a wide open net. They missed their opportunities as Ottawa would fall to the New Jersey Devils. Four to the two as Ottawa now has officially been eliminated from playoff contention for the 2024 playoffs. 
Um, I know that's a bit of a shock, but yeah, mathematically, Ottawa and their season will be coming to an end here in the next couple of weeks, which obviously hurts my heart. That sucks, but it is not shocking uh, to say the least. Um, now, I will mention this. Leafs Twitter is, of course, going crazy over this. I'm not going to go too much into it because I really don't care. But, you know, Nico Heeshear, he put the puck into the net after the horn. Um, unlike what really Greg did with the slap shot, uh, you know, empty net goal, that goal counts. Okay, that's a literal goal that will go to his stats um, and actually affected the final outcome of the game. Heeshear putting the puck into the net when the horn, uh, before the horn sounded, I should say, it's very different. That doesn't even, you know, have to do with anything in terms of his stats or the final score. That's just being petty, right? So um, I'm not saying he should be cross-checked in the head, but I understand why Brady Kachuk got a little heated after that because clearly he sheer uh, did that to kind of poke at the Ottawa Senators who, you know what, look, I mean, Ottawa, particularly Brady Kachuk and the Devils tonight, were going at it. I mean, I already said Mercer got launched into the, you know, bench. Uh, Brendan Smith and, you know, Kachuk alone were going at it all night. I mean, it was a very chippy affair for, frankly, a non-important game for both teams. Um, so, you know, I understand the frustration there for Kachuk. I understand the response. But I have to make this clear. This is so different than what really Greg did with the empty net slap shot goal. For two reasons. One, Kachuk didn't cross-check this guy in the head like an absolute lunatic. And two, the goal didn't count because the goal happened after the horn, which means you're just being a petty uh, loser, frankly. And once again, I don't really care. I'm not mad about it. I mean, they won the game. They earned the right to do what they want. But you have to understand the response there from Kachuk, uh, especially after, or with the context anyways, of the chippiness of tonight's game. Now, uh, yeah, so let's get to Brady Kachuk because I've been wanting to talk about this all video he was dominant today i mean unbelievably dominant 16 hits today it's actually insane that is the most in a single game in the salary cap era a literal nhl record so shout out to brady kachuk who literally clawed his team back into the game had a goal as well seven shots on goal in just over 20 minutes of ice time you cannot drop a better game there for your captain el capitano brady kachuk i'm gonna miss this guy so so much when the season's done he's been one of the only fun players to watch on a consistent basis which shouldn't be a shock because brady kachuk is literally a unicorn this guy you will not find another player like him other than maybe his brother in the national hockey league he's such a fun player to watch and tonight was one of those many reasons as to why that is the case but yeah i mean once again ottawa is officially eliminated from playoff contention and frankly the loss is probably better than a win uh, considering their uh, draft lottery odds so with that i'm gonna get to my favorite part of these videos it's 10 30 already i want to wrap up this video i've been talking i think a little bit too long um but i think you guys are okay with that if you're still watching this um but yeah so let's get into it the tankathon i know you guys love it i love it as well so let's jump into it here so with the first draw will ottawa get some luck <sighs> No, but Philly will. And you know what? Shout out to Philly. I mean, they've been on a steady decline as of late. So if you're a Philly fan watching this, there you go. Second draw. Okay. Well, the Devils won on and off the ice today. So shout out to them, I suppose. Can we finish off with a bang? Well, no. But the happy ton, lay happy ton, I should say, will. So uh, that's like five videos in a row we've absolutely lost in the tankathon after winning the first four. So. That's kind of weird. Hopefully we can rebound tomorrow when Ottawa takes on the Washington Capitals on and off the ice. So uh, yeah, besides that, thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. I will see you all soon. Go Sens go.